We're at Haas Automation, and we're here to see how these machines are made. Welcome to Haas Automation. Thank you very much. The first time here, we got the whole team here, so Good. We're excited to see what Haas has to offer. As you probably know, we're big uh, in education and trying to promote manufacturing and machining. So that's that's definitely part of what we promote and, and try to, to make sure that we use our facility to uh, to share that with everybody. Awesome, well, let's go, let's, right. let's see what we got. Yeah. This is actually our first machining center. Uh, we still have it. And so this was our VF1. Uh, this was prototyped in 1988, uh, taken to a trade show in Chicago. And everything that we're gonna see today has come as a result of this and the rotary products that we uh, built or actually that Gene Haas built prior to, to building the first machine. So see the model here is VF1. Uh, when they were building the machine, they were like, well, what are we gonna call this thing? And, and I think it was, it was Gene that basically said, well, you know, this is the very first one, so why don't we call it a VF1? So um, <laughs> we try to keep things simple around here. These two, our success is the Haas control. This is this is the Haas uh, control. And if we look at this layout, we won't spend a lot of time on it, but if you were to look at this layout and you take a look at a new machine, it's almost identical. It's wow. the software has evolved, but the basic layout of a monitor and the buttons and the navigation through that is very, very much uh, the same. So this was again 80. This was 1988. 88. Yeah, the then, the first machine. So where were we moving to like the newest? So now um, this is basically everything that's come as a result of that. We build not just vertical machining centers like we have here, uh, but we also build lathes. Uh, we build horizontal machining centers. We build five axis machining centers. We've gotten into robotics and automation. Uh, this is a FANUC robot. Uh, we are also uh, just now rolling out a cobot, which is a collaborative robot. So that's part of our offering now too. We've really, really focused on automation over the last three to four years. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, so uh, like I was saying, just around safety, uh, again, the, the most safe environment or safe setup can still have a level of, of uh, uh, danger to it. So we, we wanna provide safety systems to make sure that our customers are, are well covered and protected. So this is basically uh, like a virtual version of that cage. So the cage is a, is a you know, obviously encloses it uh, using structure. This is like a light curtain. So we have a transmitter and a receiver and the mirrors reflect that beam. And so basically I've created a virtual cage. Uh -huh. So as, I, uh, as an operator walks into that, it would break the beam and have the robot or the cobot stop or slow down, whatever you want it to do. Wow. The same thing would be true of the area scanner. Right now we're, we're setting this up as a test. These light curtains could go away and we could just have an area scanner, which basically has like a 270 degree, 275 degree uh, area that it's checking for a certain distance. Oh, that's so what that one is? That's what that yellow oh, okay. one is. And so I can walk in and approach without having these uh, mirrors and by using a laser curtain so to speak it will sense that i'm approaching the robot and also provide a level of safety so this so, is like mission impossible stuff right? yeah, maybe so yeah i mean it's it's pretty common stuff it's a five axis machine you probably heard five axis machining yeah, that's I've heard those terms yeah five axis has become more and more common uh because it basically allows us to machine parts with reduced setups so when we say five axis it really it, it does, for Haas, it means we can actually interpolate five axes at a time. Most of the time, customers are just positioning. So instead of having a three axis mill and then having to set up the operation again and again and again to get all different sides of the part, we can set it in here and basically get five sides of a part and only touch it once. So yeah, like the different tools, I always hear about that. Yeah, too. one of the things that I think, uh, I've, I've been with this company since 1990, so I've, I've sold a lot of machines directly to customers. And one of the things our customers have always appreciated is all the bells and whistles that have gone into a machine. And they're little things, but they're things that really make a Haas machine very uh, attractive to the operator. A place to hang his wrench handle, a place to hang the brush, a place to put his key nuts, a little glove box to throw his keys in or his cell phone. Um, you know, a, a place behind it to store some stuff, a place for extra tools for the tool holder, a shelf to put your drawing or your print on, you know, a place for your uh, measuring. So these are all things that really have become 
part of our DNA and, and customers really, really like it. Tools, is there like a machine here on the side that holds Yeah, them? tool changer. So uh, yeah, so if we look at the side of this, this basically has, uh, we've got a number of different tool changers. This particular one is an upgraded tool changer. It's a 50 station plus one in the spindle. So 51 tools. Wow. Uh, the standard one would be 31. Yeah, so basically 50 of these, this is a probe. This is an actually, this is a different kind of tool holder. This is an HSK holder, which is, uh, you know, something that has been more common over the last handful of years. Uh, but we offer a number of different uh, tool tapers, spindle tapers for, for all of our machines. Yeah. So uh, we talked about five axis. This is a, a new machine that we came out with just a year ago. It's a super small machine. It's, it's really very niche uh, because it's, it's only gonna make small parts. This is about the size of the part that you can make on this machine. Wow. So basically a two inch cube, so two by two by two. Um, but uh, the beauty is there's a lot of people in medical or dental or just electronics industry um, that could take advantage of a small machine like this. So you can see the footprint is super, super small. This has become very, very uh, useful in education. A big effort into promoting uh, uh, machining in schools. So we have uh, grants and scholarships and a number of different things that we do to promote uh, manufacturing and machining specifically in throughout education. I mean, uh, Gene Haas and the, the Gene Haas Foundation has given away probably hundreds yes. of millions of dollars uh, yes. to, to education to promote manufacturing throughout the world, not just in America, but around the world. So definitely an organization that's helping us be able to get to that next generation yeah. and to learn all these opportunities that right. are out here. Um, so this is uh, just a, one of one of the a large size lathe. This is probably not your common size lathe, but we get into bigger stuff with 15 or 18 inch chucks, big through holes. Um, this lathe over here is probably a little bit more uh, common as far as size. This is actually our dual spindle lathe. So we have a, a main spindle, but then we also have a secondary spindle. So we can be turning the part on the first op and then hand it off to the sub spindle and machine the back half of that as the second op. And then it also has live tooling with Y axis so we can do all the milling features as well. So this has been another key focus over the last five years is trying to figure out how to handle that part less and less because it is getting harder to find operators. Uh, it's, it's the cost of wages is going up. So that means it's really hard to have them handle that part more than once. Mm -hmm. So the key really is to try to get as much done as possible. It's a 420,000 square foot building. Uh, half of it is machine shop, half of it is assembly. Uh, we're about to go out into the machine shop, but we're on the second level. So we're on a, on a catwalk and it'll give us a good bird's eye view of everything that we do here. Uh, it'll be a little noisier, so I might have to, you know, shout a little bit, but <laughs> we'll, we'll get through it. If you have any questions, of course, let me know and, and we'll check it out. Right. Let's go. The company name is Haas Automation. And while we do provide a level of automation, it also uh, really explains how we make machines so affordably. There has always been a, a big focus on automation and the use of automation in our own machine shop. So while we're talking about robots for our customers, and we've been doing that, like I said, for about four years, we've been dabbling with robots for 20 years. Right. Um, and really, that's the secret or the key to being able to be profitable in California, in America, building a machine tool that is highly advanced, uh, being very, very competitive with, you know, within the world arena. And it's all through embracing automation. So that's what you're going to see throughout here. You'll see a lot of uh, automated machine tending. So what we see right here in front of us is just typical of, of our machine shop. Uh, we've got over 300 CNC machines that we use in manufacturing. About two thirds of them are our own machines. We're building about 900 machines a month. Um, our capacity, I mean, we could probably do upwards of 14, 1500 machines a month in this facility, but actually there's a number of them there. That's a CMM there, that's another CMM there. And again, this is where the math takes place, right? Right kids, math. Ultimately math is a key piece of information that kids really, really need if right. they want to enter into being a machinist. I mean, being right. able to understand math and knowing, you know, decimal what, places. What we find is, again, kids don't understand why is it important when you're just sitting in a classroom. Yeah. You right. start putting them behind things like that, now they want to learn. Right, and that's- They, they want to see it in the yeah. action. Ultimately, a part has to be cut on every single machine. 
And until it meets the standard, it doesn't go out the door. Our force here, our workforce, they might start on a simple operation and there's different levels that they can move into to become a second or a third level assembler. And with that comes more responsibility, but also more compensation and more responsibility. And so many of the lead managers here are guys that started off a decade or two ago doing a more simple task right. and have been able to grow up through the ranks and, and take on and pass their uh, knowledge on to, to some of our newer people. How many, how many employees? We've got, I think right now, about 1,500 employees. Uh, that includes a number of temp workers. Uh, and so the 15 might be a little high. I'm not sure what the exact right, number right. is right now. Hello, everybody. We're, we're here with Connor, one of the engineers here at Haas. Great to meet you, Connor. Great to meet you. What was your path to get hired here at, at Haas? So my path was I started as a summer intern in the R&D engineering department and uh, they liked what I did, so they offered me a full-time position moving forward. Before I got to Haas, I had no outside training with machining. Um, I had been going to school for mechanical engineering, but no machining experience. Is there anything you suggest for them to do to prepare them for a career at Haas or in machining? Yeah, so I would recommend definitely checking out machines and you know watching videos online. For me, that helped a lot. Taking classes is super helpful. I've attended some classes long after I started machining and just going back and even looking at those classes has been super helpful. So we online have a, it's like an operator training program, which is all videos and quizzes to train young students or even older adults to become operators. And then that's a really great step to become a machinist afterwards because it's super helpful to understand all the operating aspects of a machine. My long-term goal is to be a mechanical engineer, um, but I also really enjoy the machining aspect. So for me, it's super helpful with my design because I know the capabilities of a machine and what's able to be designed and what's not really machinable. So that's all really helpful. I'm Connor with Haas Automation and I'm out. Four on the floor. Can we go see some machines? Wow, what's different view? So that's where we were up there. <laughs> yeah. Here we are down on the actual assembly floor, uh, obviously getting a little close, up close to what they much, do. Much different view. Yeah, there. yeah, obviously we can get a lot from up on the catwalk, but it's always nice to get down here at ground level. So these are some of the sub assemblies that I was telling you about. So like what we have here is tool changers uh, that have already been built and tested. We've got carousels, we've got side mount tool changers, um, we've got uh, lube panels over here that we talked about and all of this stuff is feeding the line right and right. so the line is a particular assembly line so this particular assembly line is for our mid-size verticals anywhere from like a 40 by 20 50 by 20 50 by 26 60 by 26 they all come out of this assembly line right here but just like the lays they follow the same principles so We've got a base casting, we've got a saddle, we've got a table, we've got a column laid on its back with a headstock and a, and a spindle in it. Uh, we've got a tool changer that's being mounted up to it. So they'll use the overhead crane to put all of those big heavy structures together. Obviously from a squaring standpoint, we've got to make sure everything is square, perpendicular, aligned perfectly, right? The ball screws, the guides, everything. Um, and then once that's done, it moves out from under the, the cranes to the finished assembly area. So we can check that out just so you can get a feel for what it looks like at the end of the assembly line. Those electrical cabinets, we should look inside one of those. So these electrical cabinets, this is this is the main brains for the Haas control. And it, it might look very intimidating, but it really isn't. Every single Haas machine and control is laid out the same way. You've got your main processor stack, you've got your XYZ, AB, different servo amplifiers, uh, relays for IO, so basic input output switching, uh, main power disconnect. This is our spindle drive. So this actually is our vector drive that control the variable speed of our spindle and our main power input transformer. It's really very simple. And every single machine looks exactly like it. Then they're brought over to this area 
you would see that tug. In fact, there it goes. The tug goes away with the, oh, yeah. the, the hydraulic lifting to it. It can basically come in and lift the machine and move it from station to station um, wow. rather than just picking one space. So at this point, um, we're finished assemble. So they're, they're torquing down the, the bolts. They're putting the sheet metal enclosure on it. This machine right here is actually done. It's already been uh, test cut and it's ready to go. But along the way from this to this, oh, a torque wrench, a little torque wrenching. We teach the kids that all the time. So he's got basically a granite with a cylinder on there and he's got an indicator that he's running up and down on it. So that's why he's adjusting and torquing the column to the base. He's making sure that X is squared to uh, Z, that Y is squared to Z. Um, so he'll, he'll adjust this thing so that basically when it moves on, everything is perpendicular. Here's a machine that, you know, probably three or four days ago, he was doing the same kind of process for this, this machine. And over here, this machine has the, the blocking bracket on it. So it's already been test cut, certified. It's ready to go out the door. So I know that because that red bracket under the spindle basically is the last thing they do before the machine power is disconnected and it goes out the door. And obviously this is not staged. This is a gentleman that's basically going through his checklist <laughs> to make sure that everything has been checked off and, and meets the quality standards that, that we put to put in place. Even something as simple as like a spray, spraying a protective coating on there. So, uh, you know, these machines go all around the world. So this is kind of like a, a little lube to make sure that the thing doesn't rust while it's in transit. So we spray every machine down uh, before it goes out. Even if it's local, it's gonna get treated the same way as a machine that goes into a container uh, halfway around the world. Sometimes he's bringing that machine in, setting it up, and now it's ready to be built out. Remember I told you about every machine has a part that gets test cut on it. Oh, that's right, so yeah. that little box with the brushes on it, that actually helps us contain the chips of the part that we're machining. So the machining is going on inside that box. Now it doesn't need to be a very big part. In fact, here's the part right here that we're machining. And it's basically like a little circle diamond square type of oh, part. And we can. We can see the surface finishes, we can see transitions, we can see squareness, uh, we can hear a lot that's going on, but that part gets machined inside that little box there, and those brushes on there help keep the chips inside to keep them from flying out. So obviously you can see some of the chips do get out, and we do a pretty good job of cleaning everything up, and as I said earlier, every once in a while a chip or two might float out with the right. machine, and, and uh, that shouldn't be a cause of alarm, it just means we've done our job to check the machine out. That's part of the final quality control of every machine. Wow. So what we're doing, it's a reduced rapid. It's probably running 5% rapid. And so, you know, that way it keeps it safe, but we could actually be running the machine, testing out all those electrical circuits, all the switchers, switches and sensors uh, to make sure everything works in, in unison with each other. That is so cool. So obviously we just saw him drop off a machine over there. Uh, he's come over here and he's probably gonna pull well, it looks like he's working right here, so he's going to be pulling this machine, which is almost finished. It's not quite finished, but for some reason, it's getting moved to another station. So he'll he'll hook up to it, and move it, move it out to another area. You know, I mean, there's lathes bigger than what we make, but for us, this is a this is a big lathe, and so uh, you know, this is just a larger version of what we saw happening earlier over there, uh, with large turrets and, and large fall screws. But in the industry, this is where that's that sweet spot. It's it's a it's a mom power. It's a you know, lower level automotive company making parts. This is an affordable entry level. And the affordability is the yeah. key, right? Normally, a machine this size from a lot of our competitors, you know, is a million dollar machine. And some people they might get a contract that's like the early ends of a contract. They can't go out and buy a million dollar machine. Right. But um, they can buy one of our machines, which is a fraction of that price, yeah. and still offers the the size that you need to the machine. There's the enclosures we talked about, right? The choo-choo train I was talking about that basically those came from building four. So they assemble them, put them on carts, and then transport them to whichever assembly line they need them at. Just, just crazy. Yeah. I think this is all just happening. Yeah, yeah. bikes, you see a lot of carts. Here's a, a golf cart here. So the bike is something that helps get around a, a million <laughs> square foot facility. Sometimes if I have to go from building one to building three, it's a half an hour to walk there and back. So uh, we've actually made it full circle. This is the rotary department that we saw uh, early on in our tour from upstairs at the catwalk. So this is the other end of that rotary department and this is all finished rotary assembly, either single axis rotary tables, dual axis rotary tables, multi-spindle units, 
large, small, mm -hmm. medium. And uh, what we were talking about earlier, I know we were talking, this is what started Haas. Yeah, this is, this is basically how Haas automation started was with rotary indexers and rotary tables. So again, it's still a very viable part of our business. Uh, we do a good number of them and you know here's just a whole slew of them that have already been finished and ready to go uh go to the shipping department and shipped out the customer ox is the first one that was built with building one but we've got a couple of others throughout the the campus uh, a couple more lunch room areas yeah uh, yeah we've got some indoor lunch areas but really the emphasis was put on outdoor it's it's just again it's so nice it's why not use it so yeah actually as we're walking down the hallway here i'm reminded of some of this artwork this is, remember that first machine we saw in the demo? Right, right. You can see how it kind of evolved out of some of this artwork that was some of the very first sketches that were built right. before we ever actually built the machine. The very first ideas? Yeah, the very wow. first idea. So, uh, you know, obviously it morphed a little bit. This is a little bit truer to what it actually ended up looking like. But even that is not perfectly precise. So it's just concept ideas. And I can see as we walk down the hallway, aged machines of different but eras in the progression some of the early 5c indexers some of the early ads for marketing yeah that was that was our indoor lunch area but really this is kind of the cool thing is just having this outdoor lunch area where obviously you can see people are uh taking time to get a bite to eat and uh, unwind and it's i've seen it before driving by you guys have the in and out truck here once in a while yeah so that's Everybody. actually another thing that they do uh the last wednesday of every month they basically feed the entire company so in and out is an amazing thing, right? That's a claim to right. fame for Southern California, but they'll bring five or six in and out semis in here and feed 1,500 <laughs> employees, two double doubles if you want, in about three hours. Well, Charles, uh, we appreciate you guys coming out and uh, checking out our facility. I mean, obviously we're pretty proud of it. Uh, we've accomplished a lot in a fairly short period of time. I mean, we're, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary this year from uh, the beginnings wow. of Haas Automation. Um, it's, it's been a pretty cool place to work at for 30 plus years. And, uh, but it's great to be able to share with you. We appreciate what you guys do out there. And obviously, uh, we look forward to seeing what, what you guys can accomplish and what we can do together. Thanks for having us come out. I mean, it was amazing to watch the machine go from this little piece around the entire building out to a finished product to be sent out to a customer. Yeah. Uh, and then just being able to see all the different jobs and careers and pathways that our students and people that are involved in the program can understand and know about. So definitely a wealth of knowledge. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And infinite has abilities, there right? You go. Awesome. <laughs> yes, for sure. We All appreciate right. it. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. All right. That's it for today. Thanks to Haas and the Gene Haas Foundation for an awesome tour. I'm Charles Woodruff and I'm out.